In this video, we will see the pathological features of endocarditis, myocarditis, and pericarditis. Firstly, we will see the pathological features of infective endocarditis. On gross specimen of heart affected with infective endocarditis, you will see bulky and friable vegetations on endocardium. Vegetations are the platelet rich aggregates or depositions, and friable means that they are not fully bound tightly to endocardium like atherosclerotic plaques, rather, they move to and fro with the pressure of flowing blood. This increases the tendency of being broken and embolization. Secondly, the vegetations that are initially present on the surface of endocardium erode the underlying myocardium in a ring shaped manner. Such erosions into myocardium are known as ring abscesses. Thirdly, as I already said, that vegetations are friable and some of them can be broken and embolized. So, on specimen of heart, you will see some broken pieces of vegetations that have been shed for the embolization. So, overall, you see friable vegetations on endocardium, you see ring abscesses in myocardium, and you see shedding of emboli. Now, for microscopic features, the keywords to remember are infective, endo, and carditis. Infective means bacteria, but as you are unable to visualize bacteria on H and E staining, therefore in place of bacteria, you just see a basophilic homogeneous zone. The second keyword is endo, and it represents damaged endocardium on which platelets and fibrins are deposited. The third keyword is carditis, and as itis stands for inflammation, so you see inflammatory cells. Now you know that there are two types of infective endocarditis. One is acute infective endocarditis, and the other is subacute infective endocarditis. So, in acute infective endocarditis, these inflammatory cells will be neutrophils, and in subacute infective endocarditis, these inflammatory cells will be mixture of neutrophils and lymphocytes and macrophages. And additionally, in subacute infective endocarditis, you will see granulation tissue. So, overall, on microscopic view of infective endocarditis, you will see a basophilic homogeneous zone, you will see a damaged endocardium or endothelium with platelets and fibrin. And you will see inflammatory cells and you will see granulation tissue in subacute types. Now let's come to the pathological features of myocarditis. In myocarditis, at acute stage, the heart specimen will be either normal or dilated. And in advanced cases, due to damage caused by myocyte injury, the heart will show pale and hemorrhagic areas. For microscopic features of myocarditis, the keywords to focus are myocardial damage and inflammation. So, myocarditis means myocardial damage and inflammation. Myocardial damage means that you will see damaged or necrosed myocytes with edema. And inflammation means that there will be infiltration of inflammatory cells and fibrosis. Now, there are some additional features in myocarditis depending upon the cause. If the cause is hypersensitivity myocarditis, then you will see high proportion of eosinophils on microscope because you know that hypersensitivity reactions are mediated by eosinophils. In giant cell myocarditis, you will see multinucleated giant cells. And in Chagas myocarditis, which is a parasite infection by trypanosoma, you will see parasitization of scattered myofibers and along with this, the allergic inflammatory cells that are eosinophils. Now let's discuss the pathological features of pericarditis. If pericarditis is due to viral infections or due to kidney failure, which is called uremic pericarditis, then the edematous fibrinous exudate will be deposited between, uh, between two layers of pericardium in form of butter. Such pattern is known, is known as bread and butter pericarditis. Because the two layers of pericardium resemble like pieces of bread and fibrinous exudate between them appears like butter. So it is known as bread and butter pericarditis. In cases of bacterial infection along with fibrinous exudate, you will found pus in pericardium. This is called fibrinopurulent exudate. Fibrino means fibrinous exudate and purulent means pus. And fibrinopurulent exudate will be found in bacterial pericarditis. In case of tuberculous pericarditis caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, you will find areas of caseous necrosis in pericardium that resemble like cheesy or fatty material. If pericarditis is due to infiltration of metastatic cancer cells, then you will see fibrinous exudate, bloody effusions and cancerous tissue deposit in pericardium. And at last, in cases of chronic pericarditis, you will see adherents or scars present in pericardium because you know that scar formation or fibrous tissue formation is a feature of chronic inflammation.